let's get into the next video. We are talking about, are watching a video from Fire Strips. These new computers are getting creepy. Copilot looks, Copilot first looks. So apparently, uh, OpenAI has a, or not Laptop. OpenAI, Microsoft is announcing a new computer that is AI focused, it seems like. I don't know if you guys have already seen it, but this will be my first time reacting to it. I have not seen any of it. Um, let's get into it. And I'm trying. Let me see. There it is. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I feel like a. I know you guys think I'm really good with computers, but I'm all right. But let's get into Laptop it. Laptop designed primarily oh, to yeah. compete with the that did not start at the right spot. So let me get back to the beginning. EO Saudi and Atella made a bold claim. Microsoft laptops don't suck anymore. They're 58% faster than M3, and the AI era for computers officially begins. He then pulled up Tim Cook on MSN Messenger and said, how do you like them apples? Microsoft just unveiled the Copilot Plus PC, not to be confused with GitHub Copilot or Windows Copilot PC. The Copilot Plus PC is a radical new computing paradigm that runs Windows on the ARM CPU architecture thanks to the Snapdragon Elite chip, but most importantly, the chip has a 4 40 tops neural processing unit, allowing them to pack this machine to the gills with artificial intelligence. What's the, and there's one. What's with the name in like copilots for everything? I'm not a fan. Like, I think they need to hire me or use ChatGPT to figure out some better name. Word everyone is using to describe it: creepy AF. It is May 21st, 2024, and you are watching the Code Report. The Copilot Plus PC is one of the most interesting pieces of computer technology we've seen in a long time. It's already created a lot of drama and intrigue, but first let's talk about performance. The product itself is a Surface laptop designed primarily to compete with the MacBook Air, but instead of using the traditional x86 CPU architecture with an Intel or AMD chip, it uses the Qualcomm Snap. Dragon Elite chip with the ARM architecture, which can achieve far better battery life and run all your apps without overheating your groin. Microsoft claims it's 58% faster than an M3 chip on a MacBook Air and up to 0% faster than the M4. But there's some major trade-offs here. For all of history, any app running on Windows has been designed to run on the x86 architecture, and that means many applications simply won't work on these ARM-based computers. As of today, apps like Chrome and Microsoft Office will work, and even Adobe Photoshop, but other apps... I'm already calling that this seems like a fad and it's overhyped like Adobe Premiere don't even work yet. And there's tons of other software that likely won't work on Windows for ARM for a long time. However, there is an application called Prism that emulates ARM for x86, which is similar to the Rosetta emulator on Mac. Now, when Apple made the switch to ARM with Apple Silicon, they basically told everyone to start developing for ARM or GTFO. Microsoft, though, can't exactly do that. Going forward, they're going to need to support both ARM and x86 for the foreseeable future. And another thing to keep an eye on is that Intel is developing the Lunar Lake chip, which apparently could bring x86 back to laptops. But the big question here is why is everybody calling the Copilot Plus PC creepy? Well, it has nothing to do with performance. The most interesting feature of this device is something called recall. And by recall, I mean total recall. It's constantly taking snapshots in the background of everything you do on your computer. When the pixels change enough, it takes a snapshot and stores it on device, while also using on-device image classifiers to determine what's inside that image. I, for one, actually think this is really cool. Like, I could ask it, hey, Copilot, what's that video I was working on a few weeks ago where the operating system has a logo of a penguin. And instead of manually searching through my file directories like a caveman, the copilot could just automatically find that file and open it for me. They're pretty cool, but this also... I'm not going to lie. That would be a cool feature because it's like... If I could talk to my computer like an assistant, I definitely would. I've all, I lose files and sometimes I remember things in the moment and if he could come get that for me, like I think that'd be pretty lit feels like a data privacy nightmare. Like, imagine I was part of a queue that was trying to overthrow the Congolese government. Not only would I be worried about my browser search history, but also every little thing I did privately, locally on my computer. At this point, everybody's just accepted that the government illegally spies on us, and recall seems like a great feature to build on this domestic spying infrastructure. Or at the very least, Microsoft could sell your recall data so advertisers could influence your personal AI assistant to tell you what to buy. That's pretty dystopian, but there's a couple things to keep in mind. This recall feature is entirely on device. 
dies. None of your recall data ever leaves the computer or goes into the cloud. In addition, you can delete the recall data just like your browser history, and you have control over which apps it can watch you use. So it's really not that creepy. And I'm not even gaslighting here. If you think this thing is creepy, that's just... What if the AI... I don't know if y'all can hear that noise outside. He said, like, the AI assistant is gonna, like... gonna, like, start giving us ads? Like... I don't know. I think that'd be like an invasion of privacy because you're a crazy paranoid person. Copilot plus PC is your friend, and gaslighting is not real. But now here's the creepiest thing of all. This device almost had the voice of Scarlett Johansson. The DNA of who I am is based on the millions of personalities of all the programmers who wrote me. Because one of the AI models on the Copilot Plus is gpt 4 oh Sam Altman, inspired by the dystopian movie Her, reached out to Scarlett and asked her if they could clone her voice to use for their AI. She was like, no dude, that's creepy. Leave me alone or I'm calling the cops. Sam was like, I didn't mean it like that. I'm happily married and agreed not to clone her voice. However, when GPT-4.0 dropped last week, you may have noticed the uncanny resemblance to Scarlett Johansson. Color me intrigued. Are you about to reveal something about AI? She was not too happy about this and is threatening legal action against OpenAI, so they discontinued that voice. It's yet another big scandal for the world's most popular closed source AI company. And unfortunately, that means we'll never get to live out the incel dystopian nightmare of using our Microsoft Copilot Plus PCs as an AI girlfriend voiced by the Academy Award nominated actress we all expected. But this has been The Code Report. Thanks for <laughs> Man, I don't know if you, I've been watching Fireship for a long time and he used to never say things like that. Like, it would just be straight information. And so, I don't know. I think that's part of the content creation journey. But ARPC, I think, would I get one? I would love to play with it. I don't know if I would, like, use it right now. Like, honestly, I don't use... I use AI a lot on my job. I use for ideation. I don't use it to necessarily complete any task at my job completely. Um, because it would be really bad at it. But uh, I, I'd be curious to see how far, if this could be useful. It definitely does seem like a fad, like that one use case that he was talking about, I would say <laughs> would be a rare use case. Would it be worth the price? Like I already have a laptop and yeah, not sure. Um,